Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. Coming on here tonight to give you guys a short update. This will be your world news update for the 6th of February, 2021. Uh, don't have a whole lot of articles here, just two short, sweet, to the point articles uh, about some of the world news going on. So first ones here in the States. There were a swarm of earthquakes in Oklahoma, including a 4.2 magnitude earthquake. And I'm going to read this right now. A 4.2 magnitude earthquake in Oklahoma was the largest in a swarm of temblers to rattle the state on Friday, officials say. The large quake rumbled shortly before noon near Garfield in Noble Counties, about 80 miles north of Oklahoma City, according to the USGS. It was among a dozen earthquakes, about a dozen or so earthquakes in the area from late morning uh, to early afternoon, according to local and state geologists. Um, hundreds have reported feeling the earthquake swarm, as well as the 4.2 quake. A resident in Covington, which is near the epicenter, said the shaking knocked items off the walls of her home, while others felt the earthquake about as far away as 30 miles away in Enid. And that's according to the Enid News and Eagle in one of their local reports. So there was an earthquake swarm in Oklahoma, um, around a dozen earthquakes or so, uh, kind of capping off with a 4.2 magnitude earthquake, and this was yesterday. This was on Friday in Oklahoma, around 80 miles or so north of Oklahoma City. So that was what happened in Oklahoma yesterday. Now we're going to go over to Somalia, who has declared a state of emergency over a brand new swarm of locusts that is now invading the country. Let's go ahead and read this. Somalia has announced a state of emergency on Wednesday, February 4th, 2021, as the nation battles a new generation of desert locust swarms that have already caused major damage to farmlands. Meanwhile, infestations are ongoing in Saudi Arabia, posing risks that any locust that escaped control could form adult groups that would likely move inland. Somalia is facing humanitarian needs never witnessed before as the country is battling locusts, flooding, other natural disasters, as well as the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, scamdemic, whatever you want to call it. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, initially warned that the fleet of anti-locust aircraft in Kenya and Somalia could be grounded as the funding fell short of $38 million. The intensity of the locust outbreak over the East African region has been blamed on climate change. I use that phrase very loosely for obvious reasons. The state of emergency declared in Somalia is in effect particularly in the southern areas. In a statement, FAO said, quote, rains and winds are two of the most favorable conditions for desert locusts to form and multiply rapidly and spread to areas where they had previously been under control, unquote. Quote, in Somalia, hopper bands are present on the northwest coast and in the northeast where some have started to fledge and will be forming immature swarms. Intensive control operations are underway to reduce the number of new swarms that will form this month, unquote. Swarms that develop on the northwest coast are likely to move to the plateau and adjacent areas of eastern Ethiopia, while swarms in the northeast are forecast to spread west along the plateau where they could mature and produce another generation of breeding from mid-March onwards within Somalia, especially if more rain it, you know, will end up falling as it's scheduled to, right? They're scheduling a lot of rainfall, a lot of thunderstorms in the region, and if that does indeed happen, this will lead to potentially another generation of locust swarm breeding from about mid-March onwards. So that's the situation. Those are the two articles I wanted to bring to your attention this evening. I hope you all are doing all right. I just wanted to come on here and briefly deliver the news. So now we're going to read you all the Gospels found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Right, And uh, before I go on, if you all could please pray for my health and well-being. I felt kind of sick today. Um, I'm not my bubbly self. I'm just, I haven't felt too hot. So if you all could please pray for my health and well-being as well as joy, peace, and comfort, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I love you so much. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, 
the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. That is how you were saved if you believe that alone in your heart. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, died on the cross for our sins, shedding his precious blood for the remission of all mankind's sins, past, present, and future. All of our sins were paid for with Christ's shed blood on the cross of Calvary. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead, and he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. Right? For our justification and salvation. We are saved and justified the nanosecond that we believe the one true gospel of grace. By faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. Right? Christ did all the work because God loved us enough to send his only begotten son. John 3 verse 16 to 18, which I will now read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's the son of God, God the son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. I would implore you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right now for your salvation and eternal security if you haven't. That's how you're saved, right? There's no works or prerequisites required, right? You are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone by believing the gospel. That's what it comes back around to is the gospel of grace, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. And if you believe that alone, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. Right? You're not saved by your water baptism. You're not saved by your keeping the commandments or following the law right? or, or speaking in tongues. None of those things save you. All right, None of those things save you, keep you saved, have to do with salvation. None of them. Right, Those tend to lean more towards the discipleship aspect, which is your spiritual growth, your walk with Christ after salvation. But salvation is merely by believing in Christ alone. So simple, right? It's not of our own accord or merit that we're saved. It's by putting our full faith and trust in what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross alone. That's what will actually save us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I'd implore you, if you're watching this video right now, if you've stumbled across my channel and you're a non-believer, I would implore and greatly encourage you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right now for your salvation and eternal security. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Your next breath's not guaranteed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and you will be guaranteed eternal life. Simple as that. All right, so that's all I'm feeling led to give you guys. Just wanted to come on here and give you all a brief two-article update on some of the stuff going on. And, of course, share the gospel. That's my like my favorite part of doing this. I enjoy sharing the gospel. I had the chance to uh, go to some YouTube live streams yesterday and share the gospel. And uh, the atheists are definitely out in full force, but we love them anyways. And we pray for their salvation. And if they don't get saved now, we pray that they get saved during the tribulation. Uh, when I suspect a lot of people will end up coming to Christ as a result of the post-rapture world. But uh, anyways, I'm going to end it before I get off on a tangent. So I will see you guys in the next video, should the Lord tarry is coming. Otherwise, God bless. All right, take care.